Salute, all of you fabulous reviewers out there. Just those the FBS. And we also have this guy. Well, hello everybody, it's me, CC Trainer Ling, and I really gotta say that I am really looking forward to this review, you know, it's, it's just gonna be really awesome, eh? I can't wait to really get into it, but you know so much about this thing. It's gonna be so good, eh? Choose your episode. RPS the musical. So now that we know what episode it is, it is time for us to check it out. Check it out! Today's episode is LPS the musical. The plot here is while Blythe counts the shop's inventory for her boss, Mrs. Twombly practices for an upcoming internet reunion with her old college singing quartet, the Four Songbirds. But she has difficulty getting in tune because of a nervous moose named Fleur La Mousse performing some singing of her own in the day camp, though everyone else minus Blythe only hears loud moose noises. So Blythe has to find a way to calm this moose down before Mrs. Twombly's reunion. Our first positive is... Mrs. Twombly. As Mrs. Twombly, finally we get another episode with our favorite shop owner, and she's got a singing group, huh? We learn more about Twombly. Like Zoe said, she's... Full of surprises. I love step surprises because our darling Twombly has more talents. As can I just say, she looks adorable in this one. <laughs> like, with the little earmuffs, cute. I was like, oh my god. And it's just good to see her again because I, I love seeing her in these episodes and it's like, I want to see more of the Twombly. And whenever she's in an episode, I feel like it makes it that much more better for me. Yeah, it's always good to see Mrs. Twombly on the screen, knowing more about her past, and, you know, how she has to, you know, bust out a tune when she does that DX cross chop. Thought that was pretty funny. All that singing that she did in the past, and giving it up for Kung Fu Quilting, eh, that was still good. Following her dream, putting the other dream aside, it was still good. Everything worked out. I really, really <laughs> respect that about Twombly. Yeah, it also follows the fact that we're always hearing her sing, like, quite a lot, so I'm guessing that her random singing was actually due to the fact that she used to sing college yeah. with her college friends yeah that's awesome she sang in college she sang with the songbirds so i'm wondering if uh if tess how does sing with the songbirds no. <laughs> then it'd be the five songbirds it should be should be the five songbirds well it could still be the songbirds like oh wait was it called the four songbirds yeah. or was it just called the songbirds the four songbirds and yeah, it was the four songbirds in reference to the four seasons. Well, why don't they just call it like, if Tess was in there, they could have called it like, the four songbirds and Tess. Tess, <laughs> Tess and the songbirds. Tess and the songbirds. <laughs> now we're going to record that album, and it's going to be great. I'm thinking that we can have a, one of our songs is going to be like 14 minutes, you know, and we'll call it that, what is it, what is that song called? Abbey Road Melody. That's the one from the Beatles that's like really, really long. <laughs> yeah. But like, so we know that she's singing, so that's good. But we didn't, well, it was, well, I love this, but this is important to it because, well, like I said, I love hearing more about what Twombly does or what she did before she was a shop owner, and it's, it's great. It was, it was quite hyped up for not much, not much in the end, really, in my opinion. Like, we didn't really get much payoff for all the hyping and all the, all of her sort of practicing, and we only really got a few lines of a song. We didn't really get a full song, which is kind of really disappointing to me. Oh, we just got them going, Songbird. 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 Here's a male that makes I mean, that was nice and all, but it would have been nice to hear Twombly sing, so she, like, sing a full song since she's not had a solo song yet, or a, well, a song, really, like a proper song, so. Eh, 
to me, missed opportunity, but what are you going to do? Yeah, but at least it was a missed opportunity, but at least it wasn't caused due to that internet. Well, I did like the moment where Mrs. Twomley was talking about the songbirds in her past, and then it's like, oh, you know, each of them, you know, I'm good friends with each of them, but like, one who never forgave me for what I did is Martha. You know? She's always me, like, always strict and everything, you know? but she was always the best. Everyone paid attention to Martha. Martha, Martha, Martha. <laughs> Relax, Grady. It's like, eat a Snickers. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's funny, though. Yeah. Martha. Like, how dare she be mean to Tom but yeah. We, it's nice to see these new, I, I like these new characters, but like, they're really, I like the designs as well. Like, Martha looks like a big With that <laughs> attitude, yeah. I agree. <laughs> and the, 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 <laughs> oh, well, no, my Martha had this uh, look to her that made her look a little bit more stern looking, and I like that because it worked really well because that's kind of a kind of bossy stern one. We got the, the middle, the one in the middle was very cute, little on the red outfit. I thought she was adorable. It's like, oh, you're so cute. And then we had the other one in the end. Yeah, they were all cute characters. Like, I liked them. They were good. <laughs> and still, yeah, and, and still able to sing in harmony, except Martha, who went a little bit too high there. But. Yeah. Hey, they still got it. Songbird, they yeah. Songbird, songbird, song. God damn it, Martha. Somewhere, oh. some glasses shattering. Songbird. She, Martha sang so high pitched that only Zoe could hear her. And, and she's like, my ears, no. But poor Zoe is too busy being her ears are too busy being destroyed by them. Then loses, which we'll talk about later. But before we get to them, we had the support of Blythe, who supported our darling Twombly in her escapade. She she still wanted Twombly to pursue her reunion with the Songbirds, and she went to a sort of quite a few lengths to try and help Twombly out there by offering to do the inventory and setting up the webcam talking thing. Yes, the not Skype. Yeah, what was it called? I see your face. I said, you want to see my face? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've seen the light! <laughs> then one of the Martha's head explodes. <laughs> if anyone gets that reference, I'll give a thumbs up. Because I can't do more than that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Blake was though, and I like the little outfit she was wearing this one. Like the weird pinwheel dress thing. The skirt thing. That's that was cute. And her in Twombly with the whole, the, the cool going off before it should have done. And then uh, doing like the freezing and the connection problems thing. That was really funny when she did, makes that weird face. And this is, I like how Mrs. Tomlin is really slow and just sort of like, oh, oh, she's doing something, she's paused. Oh, I better do it too. <laughs> I like how the other songbirds didn't really, you know, comment on how Tomlin was just like, was it was after Blythe, like, they didn't freeze at the same time, but that was really funny. <laughs> well, I think it's the lag, you know? Yeah. Yeah, the lag was good. And, and I'll say it right now. Ashley Ball doing that glitching, talking thing, that was really good. I liked it. That is amazing. Yeah, that's, uh, from what I've learned, that is actually kind of difficult to do. Like, it's a thing you got to practice a little bit, because uh, that's something that actors can do, but it takes a little bit of practice to get the hang of it, though. Well, you know, to did... be talking, but then, like, to have certain words just cut out while you're just, like, it, it's impressive. She did a pretty good job of that, though, I was like, like you say, it's like, she sounded really realistic, because, like, it sounded exactly like how it cuts off on a Skype call or something. So it's like, hearing Blythe doing that, it sounded like that. It was uh, really realistic and, and pretty believable, and it makes you question, does Blythe do this often? Does she pretend to cut out? Oh, oh, oh Jasper's kind of on the phone, I'm, I don't want to talk to him, um, 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 hi, J J Jasper, um, just, you, uh, <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. mm, yep. Yep, curse those dominant Canadian genes. Oh, yes. Yeah. She is Canadian. One fourth Canadian. Uh, so, by that logic, that means that she drinks maple syrup directly from the bottle. Well, yeah, I mean, who doesn't? Yeah, well, and she is part bear. So. She's part bear. Yes. All she's... Canadians are part bear. Oh, that's right. She's a bear. She's part bear. I knew it. That conspiracy theory is real. And now. Life loves hockey, and um, time for a game of disappearing lives. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks to those Canadian jeans, she can. She's the only one who can hear talented singing of Fleur La Mousse. Yeah, I I don't know about everyone else, but I actually thought this moose was an interesting character. She wasn't the best guest pet by any stretch of the imagination. I know she's not the best, but it's just when you hear the singing and not that sound of like a garbage compactor, you know pressing against a car or whatever, like, whatever Mystic Pets were saying what it was and what Blythe was saying it was, 
It truly gets singing. Now, I don't know if it's Kathleen who was doing those singing parts, or if it was uh, one of the featured singers in this episode, but it sounded really good. It sounded really, I can't say musical-like, but it sounded really operatic. And that's, and that's something that I really like about this movie, the operatic singing she does when she's nervous. Yeah. It, it was, I believe it was a featured singer, because at the end of the credits it said a featured singer, but whoever that featured singer is really managed to capture Kathleen's voice, because not only did she sound a little bit like the blues, it sounded a little bit like Twombly, for the point where Black actually mistaken the singing for Twombly singing. So, that was an interesting choice. Yeah. Yeah. It was good with one moose, but why not have another one? You throw in the other moose from the Wildlife Preserve, Hammy... Jumbo? I think they call them Hammy. They, yeah, forget it. His name's Hammy. And not only does he have an infatuation with Floor, but he also really likes her singing. And he loves to dance. You put the singing and the dancing together, and you get yourself a little bit of a homage to Moulin Rouge. Or probably more specifically, Beauty and the Beast, with them singing and dancing together in a, in a, in a big ballroom. It was good. It was a nice little homage to it, and I... and. And much like other homages the show does, I always give a lot of respect. Yeah, well, I thought Kathleen Barr did a good job on the voice for Fleur, but I still didn't really like the characters all that much. So, I guess we move on to the negatives? You didn't like the no. moose? Well, there's the door. And now the show my out. <laughs> nope, I wasn't a big fan of the mooses, to, to be honest. Moose. The moose, the moose. <laughs> <laughs> but whoever they are, whatever they, like the moose. Moose, moose! <laughs> French moose. I'm not afraid of a big ass animal like that. I'm just, it's just poor Twombly was struggling to push freaking the moose in. It's like, I, I didn't really, I don't really know what it was about Fleur and Hammy that just, I guess, rubbed me the wrong way or something. Because with Fleur, I actually found it a bit hard to understand what she was saying. Honestly, I tried to sort of listen to what she was saying. It kind of just, I really just didn't really understand what she was talking about half the time. And it's just like, I can sing, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, you might be. A decent singer, but you know Eliza May. No one knows her. Lois is the one that sings whenever. It's like, she claims that she was singing because she was nervous. Though, it kind of draws attention to herself more by singing, but I guess whatever people do when they're nervous, I guess certain people have certain things they do, yeah. that's her thing. Yeah. But it's still, she still seemed like she didn't really notice how the pets were feeling about it, really. She didn't really say, oh no, I'm so sorry, pets. I didn't know you didn't like my singing. I'm so sorry. In fairness, <laughs> in fairness, Penny did say that Flora should do whatever it is she needs to to make herself feel more comfortable, and just her singing or her humming is what makes her feel comfortable. So, let, let me get this straight. It's like, do whatever is fun. Well, she started kicking the other pets. I'm just saying that hypothetically. She started kicking the other pets. And then it's like, well, she's just doing what makes her comfortable. I mean, it hurts us, but for her, it's fine. Oh, no. Yeah. Like, the point is that the singing that she was doing was, you know, like, it was really loud. <laughs> Everyone didn't like it. And even with Blythe saying, hey, you should try, you know, singing a little softly or a little quieter, you know, like, you know, you know dial it back a few knots, you know? And then she sings even louder. And I was like, oh, okay, that's something. That was been really kind of annoying to me as well, because it's like, dude, she told you to sing quiet and you sing louder. It's like, come on. It's like, and is she really that nervous? Seriously? I mean, like, it's just a little special, a little day camp. I mean, there's not too much to be nervous about her, to be honest. I mean, I don't really know, I guess, because I'm not a moose and I'm not in a day camp. It's <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, well, that'd be weird. Well, I mean, like, she has spent her time in a reserve for how long, and she's probably never been out of that reserve, so it's perfectly understandable as to why she'd feel really uncomfortable being in a setting that she's not used to. Yeah. Especially, just, especially without her favorite little stick. Still doesn't justify it. Really doesn't. I thought she said steak. Steak. I'm no. serious. Like, then I heard it's like, my favorite steak. Steak. Steak? Steak. 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 Medium rare. Steak? You know. You got a favorite steak. I was like... Oh, okay, so this moose likes steaks, and then it was steak. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> yes. Okay. Like, you know, a steak with onions and good stuff on there. A1 sauce, you know, give it to the moose, and she's like, what? <laughs> it's just like, you wanted your steak, right? My steak, Blythe. Because uh, 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 she must have annoyed a lot of people because like all those people that phoned in because they must have been really loud because like all those people in the alleyway like phoned in and it was like everyone practically on the block phoned in and she was really destructive with her singing only Blythe or Canadians can I guess understand her singing and it's just I don't think it was very considerate of others really in all honesty I mean I know she was nervous but it's just 
just didn't really rub me the right way, really. She could have at least tried to mask herself, like, from singing. Like, she's singing, but she's like, she could she didn't even try to go, oops, I, I'm sorry, I gotta stop singing. But, like, she didn't even try to cover her sound up or anything. It was the other pet's life that did that. She didn't attempt to make herself more quiet or go somewhere where it wouldn't be as heard by anyone. She could have tried some stuff, but she didn't. Instead, she just stood there regularly and just let life kind of sort her out. And Sphinx is like, no, I, I just let life deal with me. I don't, I'm gonna keep singing. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. yeah. Then we had our other moose. Yeah. Hammy. And Hammy. All right. He's like, ah. Oh. Ah, uh, what's it called? I came to see the the girl singing, and I just see you guys here. Even though I thought this place was supposed to be getting clean, but I guess everyone's on break because it still looks dirty to me. Same. That's why the other moose, Flora or whatever, Flora is there, innovating and stuff. So I haven't done anything yet. But Hammy is there, and he dances. Same moves, but that's fine. Whatever, it's cool. And he kind of, I don't know. I just kind of came off sometimes selfish, especially at that scene at the end where. He really wants her to sing. It's like, why is she not singing? And then he tells him, oh, well, she's got her steak and her stick. So she's full and she has her stick. So you know, she doesn't really, you know, she's not going to sing now. And he just takes it away. He's like, no, I need her to sing now. Now. Yeah. That was just like a, I don't know. Is, is that what he does? Wait, this is the a family of Lucy he really loves, but he would rather have her sing when she's nervous or whatever. And then just, oh no, she's calm now, okay, maybe I should just let her be calm here then. That makes her, probably make her feel better with her stick. No, 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 I don't give I don't give two craps about that, honey. I'm gonna take that stick away. She's gonna sing for me, alright? I don't care who it inconveniences, she's singing for me right now. Yeah, it's just, it's just like, it's just, this is the moose, like he practically just forced Vinny and Snail to take him, pretty much. I mean, I know he didn't like push them or anything, but he got the stick. And he basically wouldn't let them have it unless he went with them. And another question I have here is, don't know if I'm remembering the episode wrong, but how did he know where LPS was? I'm guessing uh, Sunil and Vinny probably gave him the directions. I mean, like, Vinny and Sunil have been around downtown city and they usually find their way back to the pet shop. Well, Vinny found his way back once, but they had that rat to follow. Uh, yeah. We don't know how far, I guess we, the thing here is we don't know how far the enclosure is from the shop. I'm guessing it might not be that far, but also, they got there through the hamster tubes before, so were they? How would they? I guess remember the way back the other way if they didn't go through the the town, the city instead. So then uh, I have no idea. It's like they maybe have been there before. Maybe I guess they like mooses or something. They've, Moose! all, they've all been around downtown city. I mean, they've lived them for how long? And they've had adventures around the city. And they usually end up coming right back. Well, like that's when they have life or someone else take them around. But even then, they usually aren't going that far, but I mean, this is the first time we see this moose reserve and it's probably somewhere else, we don't know. Because then again, if it's for the moose, it has to be somewhere where there's a lot of like trees and stuff. So, maybe it's near the, the zoo-ish area, I, I have yeah. no idea. Maybe it's in the park, we don't know, but it's... I don't know, then that and the moose is the one that takes them, so a moose running around through the city, I don't know, might just draw attention or something. A, a llama going through the city is going to cause attention, <laughs> hey, that's thank through, you! Yeah, that drew attention. Yeah. I mean, no one got off the llama. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. It's also the fact that, like, it's not just a, it's, you're forgetting, it's not just a moose, it's, it's a moose with, with a mongus and a gecko on it. So it's like, people are both, well, is this like, no park keepers or something? Like, well, there's no one at that damn sanctuary, so it was just like, they just kind of, oh, whoever was guarding the place just kind of just let the moose go, I guess. It's like, oh, oh, he just does that. It's, it's like, he just just let him go out. It's like that's fine. Perhaps they were on lunch. We'll never know. Uh, no one was cleaning. No one was guarding the place or the mooses. Uh, I guess, but yeah. enough moose talk. I, I think we've made our point on that. Yes, and of course, well, uh, I mean, they had a, a song ish ish. Yeah, an homage. <laughs> a ten second homage, I guess. That's not that good to me. So I guess that's it. Um, it's like. We had this episode, and it's called LPS, LPS, the musical. I mean, it wouldn't have been so bad if they just thought the musical, but L the added LPS to it makes it sound grand. And like the fact that we've, we don't have as many songs this season kind of got 
basically most people thinking that it was going to be a musical episode. And it kind of just, the singing we got, to me, wasn't really the best from, well, from the moose. I mean, Twilight Songbirds was fine, but we barely got to hear them. So it's like, we heard them at the end for like 20 seconds, maybe. Probably less than that. And it's like, the moose, the moose, I'm going to call them mooses, I don't care. It's mooses to me. Those mooses got the, got their, got their songs and stuff, and that just really was just, ah, it just didn't really sound like good to me. Just, all it was was just going, oh, it's not my stick. Blah, blah, blah. You're a male moose. I'm a male moose. Blah blah blah. It's like okay. So I don't even understand what she's singing about because like I said I can understand the character in general. Anyways, I was like I could understand her singing. It's just we could have had at least one song. Like I mean, if we're not gonna get any other songs, at least give us the Twombly song because we've established this group and we don't get song from them. We didn't get any really any major songs in this episode, despite being called LPS the musical. It's like, it just sounds too big and epic for it not to have, like, more songs than just the moose song and the songbirds song. Yeah, which is uh, too short to be technically called a song if we're going to go with the Sugar Sprinkles discussion that we had last time. So overall for me, this episode, LPS The Musical, could be something of a rare occasion or once in a while that could be a giant musical episode, but it wasn't, and... Yeah, kind of disappointed, but and well, it's whatever. But even without that expectation and not these high hopes for a bunch of songs and this and that, the episode still comes off as average or even maybe below average. So Neil and Vinny were great, even though they've had many episodes, but again, we had to add another one to their repertoire, which we weren't anticipating, but you, know, you got another one. So why not, I guess. So Twilight was good in this one. Life was good. Songbirds. Freaking Martha. So overall, I'll give this episode a 5.75 out of 10. Musical, musical, we're getting the bare minimum. Yeah. But hey, it's about moose, says, I guess. Okay, so I guess it's my final thoughts now. Going into this episode, I think maybe I hyped myself up a little bit too much for it, mainly because it's the be LPS, the musical. <laughs> But like, even ignoring that, just like Bacon said, I still felt the episode really didn't have too much to it. And I feel like this episode could have maybe focused on Mrs. Twombly more than what it did. Like maybe actually have her leave the shop and we actually focus on her plot with the other group instead of her staying in the shop. It would have probably, it would have made it much better in my opinion because we would have got to know these characters more rather than just seeing them on a screen. I mean, sure, it added to some funny moments, but we really could have had some really great development for Mrs. Twombly and maybe give her more of or less her own episode, in a sense, which we still haven't really gotten yet to this day, to the whole series, season, so the whole series so far, she hasn't really got a proper episode. But even ignoring that, I wasn't really as keen on the mooses or the singing. I mean, I'm not going to diss the singer because she... She did sound okay, but it's just, I didn't really care for that kind of style, I guess. And I just really was expecting more than what we got, and it kind of felt a little bit disappointing to me. But there were some good points, there were some bad points, and it's just... Sadly, in my opinion, I think the back was slightly outweigh some of the good points. <laughs> I had some funny moments like with Vinny and Sunil and Mrs. Twombly. And Blythe and the pets with Minka and her breakfast. <laughs> I already had breakfast! <laughs> so, that was moments like that, which were great. And so, uh, for now, or as I'll touch with you, I'm gonna give this a, I guess a six, because I just felt it could have had more to it, but this, I feel like a six is a good enough score for this review. Let's be done. <laughs> well, I guess for me, just uh, being the odd one out here, I'm I'm actually going to say that uh, this episode was actually not as bad as as I really thought it was going going into it the first time. Will I say that that it had some missed opportunities? Absolutely. Could it could it have been way better? Of course it could have been better. But it really didn't do anything that was sinfully wrong that would make it a bad episode. You know, it's, it's, it's just it didn't really lie in the title. It was something like it definitely could have been a musical, 
but musical, it's a pun. I don't really knock it for the pun. The puns really, it, it's, it's something. At least we got something out of it, so it's not the worst thing that we've had. Blur was good with her singing, even though it probably wasn't Kathleen doing it. I still appreciate the singing, the very operatic singing. I really liked it. Hammy and Blur having their musical moment, even though I will say that Hammy was selfish. It's it, it, it's just something that, yeah, I just can't really form a really, uh, really good opinion on it, you know. It's just not not really worth knocking down a couple of points. Mrs. Twombly having a moment with her singing group, the four songbirds, I, I thought it was really good. It's a nice history with that, even though we didn't get much of it. We got something out of it. Blythe in her Dominic uh, and ATM jeans. Hey, that's it's, it's pretty good. I like it. Overall, L LPS the musical. It's not the musical that we wanted. It's just a musical pun, but it's it's just there. It's just there, and I definitely appreciate what it was going for. It wasn't what I really expected, but it's whatever. Overall, I will give the musical an 8.8 .8 out of 10. Hey, it did something right. Hmm. So this has been a review of the OPS the musical. Join us again next week when we review Sing Red. So this is RT3 signing out. Peace out, home slices. Au revoir. And of course, pet shoppers, we will be seeing you in the next episode. So thanks, and say it with me now. Thanks again.